Hey fellow Star Wars citizens, Scrapchat here. Starting today, I'll be living out of my Karak for the week, which uh, means we have to get it loaded with the vehicles I'll be needing to complete my usual missions. We'll also transfer uh, some components over from the C2 to really make this puppy hum. Then in episodes uh, throughout the week, I'll be running missions and running cargo strictly out of the Karak. Before we really get into it here, if you haven't already signed up to play Star Citizen, make sure to use my referral code listed in the description. It'll get you an additional 5,000 credits when you create your account, and the channel gets some credits towards some swag. Also, if you're looking for a great Star Citizen organization to join, you should check out the Star Citizen Friends and Mentoring. I joined their Discord, and they've really helped me learn and improve my gameplay. The link to the Discord is in the description as well. Okay, so let's start with upgrading the Carrick. I have a C2 with a TS-2 Quantum Drive and a pair of FR-86 shields, so I've already transferred those to the Carrick to beef it up a little. Welcome to the ASOP Vehicle Retrieval System. Please visit us again. Vehicle selected. Stand by. Now let's head on over to HDMS Edmund to pick up uh, our additional vehicles. Your vehicle has been delivered to Please the following... Visit. But first, let's take a short tour of the Carrick. As you can easily get lost on this ship, I, I thought the C2 was big. This thing is a beast. First, it looks like uh, there's only one way in, and that's through a ramp in the front. Interestingly, this area is called the Garage, which I guess makes sense. And this is the front of the sublevel. This is where we'll be storing uh, ground vehicles for those unfriendly bunkers, and probably the 2SCU box for the friendly bunkers. To the left is a service ladder, which allows you to move between the sub-level, habitation level, and the technical level in case there's a ship-wide loss of power. Leaving the garage, we have a hall uh, on our right for EVA suit storage, leading to a docking collar. Across from that, we have an elevator that will take us to either the habitation or technical level. Continuing down the corridor are three large cargo bays, which comes close to storing as much as the C2 Hercules Starlifter, which is 456 SCU. Each cargo hold has its own elevator, uh, which will take you down into the hold area. At the end of the catwalk is a room with several weapons and EVA lockers, as well as the main elevator. This corridor leads to the aft turret, giving the gunner access to a pair of CF-447 Rhino laser repeaters. Let's take the elevator to the level above us called the habitation level. Now moving forward down this corridor, we wrap around the impressive medical bay. Upon entering the medical bay, we are met with a uh, decontamination room, which leads us into what I assume is the medical treatment room. On either side are two identically sized rooms. One is the doctor's office, and the other is a storage room. Directly has a tier three medical bin, giving us the ability to transfer our imprint. Now when I croak while on a bunker mission, I'll respawn here instead of on a distant space station, allowing me to get right back into the fight 
and give me a better chance of retaining my favorite gun. Moving forward towards the front of the ship, we continue down the corridor. On our right is the same service ladder we saw in the garage. And right next to that is the elevator. Across the hall is the rec room for the crew. Sadly, the pool table does not seem to be functional. Uh, there are bathrooms through this door. And through this door are the crew's quarters. And further down are the showers. To the left is the mess hall. Very reminiscent of the chestburster scene in Alien If You Ask Me, I won't be eating there. Down the corridor on the left is my, I mean, captain's ready room. And through this door is my bedroom. And then bathroom. And apparently, I'm a vampire. Continuing on down the corridor is the lower bridge. There's an elevator connecting the upper and lower bridges. Several stations for avionics and radar operations. And finally, the pilot and co-pilot seats. Now let's use the elevator and head to the upper bridge on the technical level. Where we'll find a support station, remote turret station, and command station. As we leave the bridge, we move down this corridor lined with escape pods. Further down on the right is the repair room. And across the hall is the drone room. Moving down the hall, we once again see the elevator and service ladder on our left. As the quarter splits, we see an observation window into the hangar bay, where our Pisces will be stowed. Going through this door leads us around the hangar bay to one of the two doors that gives us access to the hangar bay. I assume the hangar bay has some way of preserving the atmosphere since we don't have an airlock. I might have to test that at some point. Continuing down the corridor leads us to the starboard turret, giving a gunner access to a pair of CF-477 Rhino laser repeaters. There is a mirror turret on the other side of the ship. That's a total of four Rhino turrets when you include the remote turret managed by the bridge. Further down the corridor is engineering. Here we have an observation window into the engineering section. The entire room itself is a, a two-deck affair with a ladder towards the back and an elevator in the front. Besides providing access to the engines, the massive fuel tanks are located in this section as well. Returning to the main elevator, let's head on up to the cartography deck. On this deck, we are presented with a very cool, but completely non-functional, representation of the Stanton system. On either side of the elevator is a corridor leading to an airlock. Giving us EVA access to the top of the ship.
And that's the nickel tour of the Carrick that we'll be calling home for the next several episodes. Alright, let's continue on down to HDMS Admin to pick up a few vehicles. I'd say overall the Carrick flies uh, as I would expect a beast this size would. The C2, if you ask me, flies too well for its size. It flies uh, almost like a really, really big fighter. I'll also say uh, trying to shoehorn the Carrick into a hangar is no small feat. You really have to line it up just right or you'll catch the rhinos on the way in. Thankfully, it's a clear day on Hurston, where this would be a much more difficult first time landing. I've tried flying from the command console and the pilot seat, and I think I prefer the pilot seat. I also don't understand why there's two places uh, from which you can fly a car. Uh, if any of you know, please leave a comment about it. I'm, I'm dying to know why. Alright, let's go get the Drake Mule loaded up. And let's not forget to open the hangar bay doors on the way out. Why does it look like it's already open? Uh, I guess it's a bug. That's better. Let's head on over to the Platinum Bay Landing Services and get out the mule. Welcome to the ASOC Vehicle Retrieval System. claim has been sent. Your vehicle has been moved to our storage facility. Vehicle selected. 
Stand by. Your vehicle has been delivered to the following location. Please visit us again. I really love this little guy for getting to unfriendly bunkers. Turns on a dime, has yet to not right itself after a rollover, good lighting, handles better than the Ursa or PTV. I love it. And once 3.18 drops and this thing can carry a 1 SCU box, it'll be dope for, for bunker missions. Time to get the Pisces. This is probably my most uh, favorite runabout, hands down. Thank you. 
Alrighty, let's close up the bay and get out of here. I kind of wish I could afford a Carrick with real life money. <laughs> this is way too cool. the character does exiting that mode. Hmm. About as expected, I guess. Well, that wasn't uh, so bad really. Let's set a course for Magda so we can uh, park her for the night. This should do. So all in all, I'd say it was a good start to our adventure. We still need to pick up a few odds and ends. Um, mainly, we need to stock up on food and water. I'll probably do that when we run some cargo. We'll loot a bit at uh, Bezdeck. That should tide us over for the week. I also want to stock up on some guns, ammo, and armor. Uh, for the bunker missions. Next time we're around Everest Harbor, uh, we'll swing by the Armistice Zone and I'll transfer some goods over. I feel like I should be writing my captain's log or something. Time to hit the sack.
Thanks for watching and have a great day. Scratchet out.